escapers, it's me, Dave, and welcome back to my escape pod. Today is going to be an amazing episode. In the pod today, we have comedian Joe Coy, and I wanted to invite my brother to come back and join us because Joe is the person who got my brother into stand-up comedy, and I wanted to hear some of those stories, but what we got was a lot more, so... In order for me to get kind of loosey-goosey for this episode, because stand-up comedians do have a lot of energy, and I, I oftentimes have uh, social anxiety. So I enjoyed a uh, full-spectrum, 100% live resin cartridge from Heavy Hitters. Excellent company. Always use their, their cartridges and uh, made me feel real good. And so I hope that you enjoy this episode as much as I did. Please don't forget to give me that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell so that uh, you know it's coming. As always, email me at itstheescapepod at gmail.com. That's itstheescapepod at gmail.com. Now enjoy this uh, this episode with my brother, Jason Collings, and comedian Joe Coy. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Escape Pod. It's me, Dave. And it's me. The third time. <laughs> We've been doing takes, it's been rough. Joe Coy, Jason Gollies. Hello. Hey. Are in the Escape Pod. We're a little bit better. Why? Why? I've been asking you for a long time to do my podcast, Lion's Den with Brent Moore and Jason Collings. You haven't done it? And I, I mean, I, <laughs> countless times. How many times did David ask you? Once. And here we are. Actually, not even once, like half of yeah. once. I thought maybe you asked him if you could do it. He went like this. He goes, yeah, you were FaceTiming me. And then David popped his head in. He goes, I started a pod. I go, I'm on it. It's my first time in a spaceship. Sorry, there's a, I've been looking at it and there's a lot of spots on here. So I'm going to clean. <laughs> That's a good squeak sound. The window. <laughs> nice yeah. So yeah, we're in space, man. Oh, this is great. Yeah, man. this because because most of the stuff that I... I enjoy escaping into uh-huh. are those kinds of things like Star Wars and and you know Marvel and Jurassic Park. What's all your those favorite things. Marvel uh, comic. Comic? I, let's see. Comic. I didn't read very many comics when I was a kid, yeah. but of the few that I did, I really enjoyed Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Yeah, he's coming out, and it's going to be. Oh, I just had it on another episode. Oh, I got it! I got it! Who's the guy in the first? Uh, then you don't got it. Ethan Hawke. Yeah. Remember Rag? Yeah, I remember Ragman. I don't know who Ragman is. <laughs> you lied. Mm-hmm. I don't. <laughs> you know, I wasn't, I was never really into the superhero shit. Like, it's like, I don't know what it is. Like, it's hard for me to get into that world. Like, I enjoy the movies, though. It's like the comic book world. It's like, it's hard. Like, I got these little nephews, man. They can't get enough of this anime. They are in this world. They do the books. They, they watch the cartoons. They're attracted to certain anime characters. Like, How do you mean attracted? Like they think they're beautiful and they exist. And, and like Whoa. they're sad that this one's gone anymore. I'll never see her again. I'm like, hey man, it's a cartoon. All right, you guys? It never existed. All right, T-shirt. stop. T-shirt. But they, they, they talk about all the new ones. It's just... It's hard for me to get into that world. If I'm gonna watch animation, it has to be comedy. What's your What's your favorite South Park? Absolutely, win, win. They're undefeated. Yeah. They don't undefeated. just win. You know what's crazy about those Catch times is when that movie came out. It was so ahead of its time. When that song, when they played Uncle Fucker, mm-hmm. <laughs> how we reacted is because we never thought we would hear something like that. And and, and, and in a in a theater and watch it. I didn't think that was going to ever, ever happen. And it was happening. I showed my, my son is the biggest South Park fan, right? He watches every single episode two or three times each, oh, right? That's me. From the movie, he had no idea about the movie and I played it for him. Did not respond the same way. It's because, because it's normal the now. The show has gotten more wild. Wild. And you, how, how crazy in this time. Uh-huh. Can't cancel a cartoon. Yeah. Right. Oh, can. They could see, if we shot a live episode. Yeah. Of one of their things. Done. By yeah. career. When you when you premiere it, mm-hmm. at the premiere, every actor of that live action version of South Park mm-hmm. should hold a gun. <laughs> okay with listening to a Cartman say the shit that oh, Cartman says. What he says, and it's great because he's a cartoon. Yeah. Did you guys see, do you remember Team America? Oh, By the same America. I love it. Fuck yeah. But do you remember the sex scene? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, she shits on his <laughs> chest. <laughs> She boo booed on him. Oh, <laughs> so God. like I was. I dying. can't believe they're gonna just let just this the happen. words they were saying. Yeah. Oh, 
But yeah, that shit, that shit's amazing. And it was so funny because that is not funny to my son. Love South Park so much, but that movie didn't even, not one laugh. It didn't hit like, Especially Uncle Fucker, I thought for sure my son was gonna be doubled over on the ground. I don't get it, Dad. So we were twenty something years younger, yeah, and that shit didn't exist. never exist at all. And we were like, yeah. oh my god, yeah. There that, was no YouTube back then. They opened we the we door, dude. We didn't see the stuff that these keys that these kids see on yeah. the regular, right? So to, to them, to him, that's like, oh yeah, that's that, my friend sings that song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, we, right. we do that in real life. And like, how disappointed were you with his reaction to the? Movie? I was so disappointed <laughs> to the point to the point where I was like, well, I guess it isn't that funny. I mean, really, I think I did fall on the ground. That one I fell on the fucking ground. And then another one was uh, uh, something about Mary when he couldn't find the comb. Yes. And he, the next scene, and her hair was up. <laughs> I remember I was laughing so hard because he. Told I didn't remember any of their dialogue. No. Oh, like, yeah. I didn't even know what they were talking job. about. She's, yes. He goes, oh, well, it's hair job. And she goes, oh, in that case. Yeah. And then because you remember he was like, what the fuck? Right. Come, where did he go? That scene is the one where I doubled over and fell on the ground. I remember I fell on the ground. Laughing. And and then the other one was South Park. South Park. There was one more where I doubled over. I can't remember what it was, but I, I just remember like dying on the ground. Right. Like literally falling on the ground. I'll remember. Mm -hmm. I promise you, I'll remember. I remember when they told me about Team America. Because I remember when they showed the advertisement that it was right. in theaters, and I was like, that, that looks was... so stupid. Right. And then uh, and then I was on my tour bus, and someone had it on DVD and put it in. I think I watched it about 100 times on it. Do you, what do you think about the mockumentary comedies? Mm, I love them. Like Best in Show. Those kinds. Christopher Guest yeah. things, I love them. But also, the there's a couple, you know, of course, The Office. Yeah. There's one that's done by... Uh, they got one where they're vampires. Oh, oh what we do, what we do in the shadows. Oh that so show good. is so hilarious, good. man. And the, the Flight of the Concord guy isn't in it. Dame. Oh, they took Jermaine. him out? No, he was in the movie. Yeah. They did a mockumentary movie. Yeah, that's the one they, I was talking about. Well, oh, that's I didn't, amazing. I've never seen that. That's the one I was I've only seen the series. Oh, no. The, the movie, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. really funny, man. Yeah. That's where they got the show. What we do in the shadows. Yes. yes. I love that. I've always loved that, that mockumentary style. Yep. Um, like movie, but also like, you know, of course the TV shows. I think they're just fun to watch. Yeah. My brother has watched the office series beginning to end so many times. Yeah. Well, they're brilliant. And I'm probably on six add, times now. And every time they yeah. add a new cast member, it's like, usually when you add a cast member, that's usually the end of the show. Right. right. Every time they added a cast member or got rid of one, it just got better. Sometimes what I love what they would do is they would take a character that was usually just mainly background. Yeah. And then the next season they're like one of the main yeah. characters. Oh yeah. Characters. I, love I don't even think Angela Kinsey had a line in the first episode. Nope. I noticed they would kind of do trial and error too. Like they would bring in a new one and then they would go away if, it, if they weren't received well. Yeah. And it's funny because I was, I felt like that about um, uh, Quincy Jones's daughter, sure. uh, Rashida Jones. Oh, so funny. <laughs> Couldn't stand her in the office. Really? Couldn't stand her character in the office. Didn't like the way she did it. Mm -hmm. But have you seen her in Parks and Recreation? She's, oh. she's fantastic in that. Dude, and she's, she's funny. In everything she like, does. I think she just had more in common with that. Like, she just was more of a connection with that character in Parks and Rec because she's great in that. Yeah, she's she's one of those actors. The, that, uh, all, that, that whole squad. But going up against Pam right so away good. was... That was the end of it already. You know what's crazy? This is what I love about these platforms too, like Netflix and Hulu. And they keep, you know, they, they, they let these things live on. When we were kids, when it, when it was done, it done. was done. Right. Never saw you Greatest never American saw it again. Hero. And then DVDs started coming out right. and then we were able to buy the box sets. Right. And that was fun. But they the cool thing so about space. my son is he's literally watching these things as if it just came out. Right. Like my son is in love with The Office. He thinks he found something like, I can't get enough of The Office. And he mm -hmm. tells me each episode. And now he's getting into... Uh, and it gives him a whole new fan base. Like Friends has a whole new fan base. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It yeah. lives on. That's why I keep telling people like, like I got this, you know, I got my specials that live on Netflix. And I'm like, you know, everyone's like, oh, why, why are you promoting? That was a long time ago. It's like, no one knows I have three specials. I can go down the street and tell 10 people I got a Netflix special and they'll be like, oh, watch it right now. So it's like, I, I what it is is it's old school mentality not catching up to new school. Right. And it's it's kind of sad. Like Hollywood is still like that. It's yeah. like, oh my no, gosh. man. Like I can get a billboard right now and, and, and put live from Seattle and people are like, yo, that new special is great. Right. They have no idea because yeah. it just sits on Netflix. You know, that like you got to catch up, man. Piano is my favorite because it was a lot of uh, emotion. Netflix said no to me like 10 times. Wow. Uh, 
you know, and I always add, I exaggerate how many times they said no to me. To and me. what it, and also what it was is they said no, asking, please just watch, please just watch this hour, please watch to the point where they were like, you know what, we're, we're going to pass. And, and I went and shot live from it. Live from Seattle by myself. I paid for it, I financed it, I edited it, everything, and uh, and I sold it to Netflix. So yeah, I have a lot of emotion tied to that that special. The one where your son was in the background. Oh, don't make him angry. And here's why: if we were on an airplane yeah. coming home from uh, Sacramento, and you had the, the first cut on your laptop, and you were doing you were doing the approval. Oh wow! On the plane, I'm literally something that no one's seen yet. I'm sitting on the plane, the cut. Of wow. that special before it even came out. Dope, yeah. bro. Don't make him angry. Cool. It was special to me too, but it hurt my feelings that that Comedy Central didn't air it, and it, it hurt. It, uh, it literally got shelved, and it, it like, I think they aired it like maybe two times than what it than than what it got. And and I noticed when Netflix started buying content from other people, right? They bought specials from Comedy Central, and they were airing it on Netflix. And that's when I knew Netflix was the way to go because. Yeah. When they put Don't Make Him Angry on Netflix, my, I, this is back when Twitter was the only thing. Twitter was just blowing up in front of me. And I was like, what's going on? And then I started reading the comments and they were like, yo, your new Netflix special is amazing. Wow. And then all of a sudden, it stopped. Central and Comedy Central sold all their content to Amazon from Netflix. And I noticed that when it was over at Amazon, I wasn't getting any love. Netflix is the way to go. That's the way to, that's that's the place. The way to go, man. So that's why I was driven. Netflix is still king. Yeah. And, and you know, I want everyone out there to know just because you get a Netflix special, your life doesn't just change. You still have to be funny. Right. And, and and don't get mad at somebody that has a Netflix special. Try and figure out their backstory and mm -hmm. find out what they did to get on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Not all of us cut our fucking specials that way. I found out um, like a month ago that Ali Wong paid for her special too. We're talking about two premier comics that are crushing the game right like why were we passed why did we have to pay for it but whatever the case may be uh, if you're out there hating on it just know that ali and joe coy paid for their specials so if you want to hate uh, maybe you should turn that anger mm -hmm. and and figure out uh how to make it yourself or, or whatever it is that you're good at just be good at it right but invest in yourself that's our escape Stay. That's comedy, and we're blessed that that's what we get to do for a living. The thing that you, because, for example, I did a show last night in Huntington Beach, outside in an outdoor mall yeah. on a balcony, and then the guy that you know sells out arenas shows up, and he went up. And who was that? That was Joe Corbin. Oh, kidding. <laughs> and, you, and you simply did it because of the love of the art. Yeah. Yeah. I'll die doing mm -hmm. this. It's amazing. Who, what's your favorite all-time special other than your own? Uh, oh, my, I got too many, man. It's hard. I got too many. It's, and, I and hate you, that question. I'm and, sorry. And you got to remember, I, I came up during the time where, well, we all came up at the same time, but where if someone had HBO, they were really rich. Mm -hmm. HBO <laughs> used to sell their, they used to market their brand by giving away free weekends. Remember that? They would stack it. Remember? They would stack mm -hmm. it with specials and, and blockbuster, real blockbuster movies. movies. Yeah. It would be like Rocky IV. Now, but you remember what you would do? You would record everything. Yep. Put it you in would get a, v, v, yep, a VHS tape, tape and then you would cut the little square out so you get six hours instead of two hours. Then, and the dubbing would be off because it was recording the, 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 the voice off. But, uh, but I would get like six specials on one tape from a, uh, from a weekend. And one of my favorite things that I would get was comic relief. Yes, first three. Bro, Comic Relief would come out, and that Billy Crystal, Goldberg, Billy Crystal, and Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah. And then they would bring up everyone. Oh yeah, all the all the comics that you were George Carlin, and Don Rickles, and all these guys that you were in love with. And then and then on top of that, they would drop the special. Earlier, my earlier specials that I was in love with was, and I'm not making this up. It was uh, Robin Williams live from the Met. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg around the world in 40 motherfucking days yeah, or something man. like that. Black outfit and then she would just change what was on her head and this woman's amazing. Right. And then uh, and then of course Delirious, uh, Bill Cosby himself. Where the background changed colors during the whole set. Yes, yeah. and he just sat on the chair. Mm -hmm. and, and But just incredible like family stories, you know, and that, that's what I always loved were the family stories. So there was a time that HBO had a new Carlin special literally every year. Yeah. Like how people like pay-per-view fights. Yeah. We would sit down when the new Carlin special was coming. The event in our house and we knew he was going to say the best, funniest shit. It's crazy. There's an Instagram account called According to George Carlin. Yeah. Follow it. 
it's so relevant to what's going on right now. Yeah. The shit he was saying 20 years ago. Yeah, he was so smart. It's 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. There's black and whites with oh, him. Oh, yeah, dude. Remember the one in the 70s where it was in the round? Yes. He was on the round stage. Genius. He still had the long hair. And he, yeah. Do you oh. remember when he was on like the Ed Sullivan show? Oh. Black horn rims on and no beard. The specials that I put on my top 10, I'll just do like five or so. But it's of course, it's Eddie Murphy one and two. You know what I mean? Oh, like mm-hmm. Raw and yeah. Change My Life. Richard Pryor, Sunset. Uh, the story behind it. Story behind it and just how... Oh, and then learning how shitty the first show took That's off. That's the story. And how the second show, yep. they literally just let everybody walk in during his set and just let him he, go off the and top. And ripped it. And ripped. The first recording that he did, the night, the first night, Awful. he got off stage and apologized to the audience after only something like 20 minutes. Yeah. He just wasn't there. But he was like, oh shit, is he done? Yeah. Comes back the next night. And rips. Destroys, destroys it. now it's one of my favorite things one to of watch. the best stand-up special then what well i think uh and it's hard to explain to like my son or kids that live during you know now but bring the pain oh man holy fucking yep. mic drop man mm-hmm. I, it was it I, I i always say that that special was more than a comedy special it changed Earth. it changed yeah. everything yep. the way people talk to each other the way people thought about each other the mm-hmm. way people it was it was literally when he says bring the pain i it, it really meant that it yep. meant bringing some fucking pain and and laughing about it uh, and dude I, I i mean literally every night i think i pop that thing in yeah and watch bring the pain it, it was one of those specials that really changed everything that was an hbo special i remember uh I couldn't wait to watch it because I went to see him at the Riviera Comedy Club going to uh, what I was working at Excalibur Hotel uh, front desk Sweet. and literally I had two tickets to see I paid for these tickets man this is before Bring the Pain came out and I, I was like you guys you have to see Chris Rock and I had to explain to them who it was to be on SNL and, uh, but he quit and, and the guy oh, that parked the car in Beverly Hills yeah I was yeah. doing that I was yeah. literally doing that and they were not like I get, and there was this one baggage handler I wish I could remember his name if he's watching this I hope and, and the baggage guy had this red ridiculous outfit on right and, and I was like we gotta go now it's right it's like, it was like 8 o'clock and he literally took off his jacket he goes I'll go is this okay I go, yeah, man. He goes, let's go. I've never been to a comedy show before. I've never seen anyone. I was laughing at him more than I was laughing at Chris because he was enjoying it. Yeah. He's never been to a comedy show. He never knew who Chris was. And uh, and, we were, and we were all in line to go in and Chris was sitting on the table right by the door like this. And I go, hey, man, I've been waiting a long time to watch this. He goes, oh, yeah. Okay. Like right. even he was surprised that, huh. that someone was coming to right. see him directly. Because he was doing Bring the Pain, bro. Right. He was doing all those jokes, man, yeah, working man. them out. And, and I remember, I wish I knew this guy's name, but I remember driving home and he was like, that was the best night of my life. Oh, that's incredible. Like, he, cause, like, cause back then comedy wasn't a thing. Yeah. Had you, and you had been doing standup. I was already doing standup. Yeah. yeah. What year was that? God, God, pain? God, I can't remember, man. Way early. Yeah. And then because, and they, they weren't, everybody was like, whatever with it. But then yeah. when it came out, that's what gave him the pathway to. Bro, it was involved. over with. Yeah, and Bigger and Black. And then to follow Bring the Pain with Bigger and Black. Sandy Chanley was the producer of that. She produced Bigger and Blacker. She produced a lot of the early half-hour HBO specials. Yeah. I was introduced to her, and she kind of took me under her wing for a little bit in the beginning of my career doing stand-up. She would come watch me and give me pointers and stuff. The person who produced Bigger and Blacker. Yeah. You know? Oh, and of course, Killing killing Him Softly, uh, Dave Chappelle. And then up until now, Sticks and Stones. I'm a huge Brian Regan. You know, I have a great Brian Regan story. For What's that? Brian Regan. So I, because of hanging out with you before I did stand up, yeah. I got very spoiled. Yeah. So I wouldn't get very starstruck. I mean, I met everybody because I was hanging out with you. Yeah. Guys that were on TV. So I, I don't really get starstruck when it comes to comedians, except if it's Brian Regan. So I'm in New York. I'm doing um, Gotham, uh-huh. right? And I'm sitting in the back of the room watching the guy that's on stage. And then the guy hosting who knows me and knows that I'm a huge Brian Regan fan texts me said, guess who just walked in? Yeah. And he goes, Brian Regan. I was like, you'd yeah. have thought Michael Jackson walked. I ran over there and just kind of wanted to hang out. And then the manager introduced me to him, which was great. And then we just like hit it off. Yeah. 15 minutes later, we're wrestling with each other and having a good time. So then I said, yeah, I got to use the restroom. And you know, at Gotham, the restroom's downstairs. Yeah. And you know how bad my knees are. So I'm, I go to the restroom. And then when I'm coming back upstairs, it's hard. Yeah. So I'm holding the rail and walking up the stairs. From the top of the stairs, I go, I hear, 
hey, Jason. And I look up and he goes, you learning stairs? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good, dude. Yeah. Did he did he uh, go up that night? No, just hang, hung out. He was in town doing the Tonight Show, and he wanted to just come hang. Man, I did. I was doing the Laugh Factory. This is when I was doing it every night. It was so funny because I was doing the Laugh Factory, and it's like a Wednesday night. Sully McCullough is sitting oh, across from me on the table guy. upstairs, right? So he's sitting this way, and he's facing the stairs, right? And all of a sudden, I see Sully. We're laughing. We're just making each other laugh. And then all of a sudden, I see Sully do one of these, like... Like, look up, like, oh, wow. like he's just seeing something come up the stairs like that. And I'm like, what? And I turn around. It's fucking Robin Williams. Robin Williams is getting ready to do the Oscars. He's going to present an award to, for best animation. But he wanted to do five minutes before he does the, presents the award. So he was going to every club and practicing yeah, his five know. minutes. And he literally was like standing right next to me, right? And he was like, oh, hi. Hi, guys. Oh, Robin Williams. And I'm like, hey, man. No shit. We don't. <laughs> You're Jesus Christ. He's just talking. He's like, yo, I just want to hang and blah, blah. I was like, Robert, do you want to go up? He goes, oh, the lady, you're going to love this shit. He goes, oh, the, the, the lady in the ticket booth said uh, there's no space you got tonight. It. And I go, are you fucking kidding me, Robin? The lady in the ticket booth said that uh, you guys are uh, uh, already, the lineup is uh, packed already. I'm like, no, you are the lineup. Sully and I looked at each other like, yeah, you can do our spots. And he went up and, and, and absolutely crushed man yeah. we're talking about a wednesday night there was probably like Jeez. 10 people that night and people just went crazy it was like one of those things they get to go home uh like wherever they live in middle america and be like you're not gonna believe who we fucking saw here's my uh, here's the rest of the story he comes back on the weekend right and does the weekend shows right and i i'm hosting i never knew what famous was so on that night was uh you know, I'll, I'll run the list. It was like it was like Dane was that night. You know, at, at mm -hmm. and then uh, and then of course Saget was there. And then of course uh, after that, Chris Rock comes in because Chris was the host of the Oscars. Right. But he's not telling anybody, so his name's not on the list, right? Uh -huh. So he just walk, he's doing every club and just working out an Oscar set, right? And then of course Robin comes in. I'm I'm the host and I'm like. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy just wants to do some time. Packed house, by the way. You know yeah. how it is on the weekend yeah. at the Laugh Factory. Ladies and gentlemen, just wants to do a little bit of time for you guys. Chris Rock. Fucking yeah. people are just yeah. standing. Like, it, it got to the point where Chris is like, all right, you guys got to sit down. Like, sit down. I like, I'm not going to have, yeah, I need to work. Like, you know, hold on. It yeah. might not be that funny. Sit down. That, that lasted about four minutes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm just sitting there looking at this like, holy fuck. And then he gets off stage and, you know, everyone's going nuts. And then, and then all of a sudden I look to my right, right by the staircase. It's fucking Robin. And I'm like, go? he's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, holy fuck, right? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Chris Rock, we got another guy that wants to, you know, just do some time for you guys. Um, um, Robin Williams. And I think people died, right? Yeah. Because there's a balcony, right? They ran down the fucking staircase no, while he was shit. on stage. Everyone's standing like they wouldn't sit down. They started moving towards the, the wow. stage. And he was like, back up, back up, everyone back up. And then this lady, these, like a couple ran down the stairs and she had a phone and she put it literally in his face like this. And she was like, just trying to take a picture of him, right? What? And then he pulled out his uh, camera and he goes, I got a camera too, bitch. Like, everyone's dying like this. I swear to God, dude. It, there's famous. It's just another level. And then it was Robin fucking yeah. Williams, man. It was like, I've never seen anything yeah. like it in my life. And here's the other story. Can I tell you the other story? Absolutely. This this one's so cool. So he he played the weekend. He had a Prius at the time and it got towed because he did. He he hasn't played the strip in so long that he no didn't park. know that you can't park in front of the clubs anymore. And he was like, oh, they took my car. So now yeah. he's he's back again, right? And I'm hosting and I'm prepared, right? Mm -hmm. And Bob Saget. Just shows up, right? He wasn't even on the show on this one. And he just shows up and he's standing right here. You know where the red light is, yep. the laugh factor. He's staring, and Bob's right here like this. And he goes, and Bob taps me on the shoulder. He goes, hey, I'm going to bring up Robin. And I'm like, oh, Bob, come on, man. You want it to, huh? Let me bring up Robin, man, please. And he goes, no, no, no. Me, me and Robin got like a thing, so I'm going to bring him up. I was like, fuck, I'm not going to argue with Bob. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, all right, man. So he pulls him up. And I'm just sitting in the boot, just like, oh, Bum, fuck. Yeah. No, no, I was like, fuck, I wanted to pull him up. Right. So anyways, when he gets off his set, I go up on stage, and as we're crossing paths, right, I hug Robin, and, and he goes, oh, go, he goes, oh, Joe, because he, right. he knows me from the other uh, show, and he goes, 
Peggy goes, yeah, man, I wanted to uh, bring you up, but, uh, but Bob wanted to bring you up. I was like, oh, okay, well, bring me back up. I go, what? He goes, bring That's me back up, man. Awesome. Yeah, just go back up and introduce me. I go, okay, all right, your next comic, ladies and gentlemen, Robin Williams. And he comes back up, grabs a microphone, and we banter for like five minutes, man. That's oh, amazing. man. What a it was moment. Just him and I bantering and... It was just so much fun. Meeting your heroes is so beautiful, especially when they're nice, man. Yeah. I, I I was so in love with Richard Jenny, by the way. Oh. And I remember he, he was at the Monte Carlo Hotel, and I just started dating this girl. And like I said, man, back then, it was hard to get people to go to comedy shows. It's yeah. not like it is now. I remember Platypus, man. I took this girl uh, to go see Richard Jenny, and, and he crushed her. I just remember that was that. Well, that's one of those dates I always remember. And I, I don't think I ever took another date out to a comedy show. Fast forward to the Laugh Factory. And here comes Richard Jenny, and he walks up, and he's like, hey, I'm gonna do some time. I'm like, yeah, please, of course. And he goes up, he does his time, and it's me, Butch Bradley, hmm. uh, Ruben, Ruben Paul. It was right. always like the same guys, right? Yes. And we're all upstairs, because it's an off night too, you know yeah. what I mean? And Richard comes up and he, after his set, and he's like, hey, did you guys happen to hear that, uh, what I did? And he starts repeating the joke, and we all heard it, because we all watched him. Mm-hmm. And he goes, what do, you, what do you think I should do? And we all started chipping in, like, jokes. And I, I remember I gave him a tag. And he goes, you mind if I keep that? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Holy fuck, I just wrote a joke for Well, I didn't write the joke, but I, I gave this guy a tag. That, and, uh, and he goes, you mind if I keep that, man? I like that. It's really good. And How was your so, outwardly reaction? I know inside. Oh, I was like, I went like this. I was like, yeah, I mean, cool, yeah. <laughs> It was, it was one of those moments. Richard yeah. Jenny was one of those guys. Too. Yeah. You know that. Stand-up is definitely an escape, man. Yeah. Like I said, when Jay and I were growing up, we used to get frustrated that people weren't as into it as we were. Yeah. You know, we, that, like he said, it was an event. When we were kids in L.A., that's, that was our date night because yeah. a lot of the clubs were under 21. Yeah, that's right. So we're right. like, what's a cool place to go in Hollywood that we can actually go to? Yeah. And you went to the comedy store. You went to the improv. Yeah. And that, the cool, that, that's the really neat thing about living here yeah. is that you can just go to a, whatever a comedy and... Chris Rock shows up. Yep. I remember walking in uh, to uh, Fat Tuesdays, Fat Tuesdays. Uh, for the first time, and and just my mouth dropped. Mm-hmm. What like, club was that at? That was co- comedy at uh, the comedy store. Yep. And I remember like, holy fuck, this is this is real. And yeah. here's Joe Torrey, and here's Guy Torrey, and here's uh, you know guys that you've seen on on uh, you know seeing Corey Holcomb and yeah, and wow. all these guys, JB Smooth, and you're just like. Amazing. Wow, this is fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then sharing the stage with Kevin Hart and Corey Holcomb and Godfrey and doing those nights yeah. with them. You know, I went from from doing tour guide work at the Dolphin Habitat and now these guys are my peers, you know right. what I mean? And just like We had a place in Long Beach that was at every Monday night and it was called at the time the, the venue was called Birdland West. And the lineups were always consistently Damon Wayans, mm. Jamie Foxx, yeah. Martin Lawrence. All those guys. And we were just watching them as they were like working stuff out. Yeah. Before they were famous. Yeah. They weren't famous yet. Yeah. Ooh. And we're there, it's, you know, we were what, 17 at the time or something? And we were, they didn't check IDs. Yeah. And we could just walk into Birdland West and watch these guys. That's and crazy. Fox would go up, murder yeah. with a face. Really? They would go up and do a thing and just make like a really funny face. Jamie Fox? And the place would lose their face. Really? Lives. Yeah. yeah. It was, he was so young too, man. Yeah. It was, Remember his ugly girl finder thing he did? With the yes. mic stand, yeah. dude, Aww. we'd never seen him before. Yeah, and he gets up when they introduced him. They're like, "This next guy," because at the time it was huge, and we were all into it. And he was like, "This next guy's the newest cast member of In Living Color," and we were like, "Whoa, what's he gonna be like?" And dude, now that you mentioned uh, that special, that's another special that I, I could watch over and over again, especially because of the piano at the end when mm-hmm. he did uh, "Live from the Foxhole" or mm. or Foxhole or something like that. That one I watched over and over again. But there's another one that that. I feel should get more credit than it deserves, man, is Last Stand, uh, Damon Wayans. Yep. Dude, that special was, and especially Remember about that. when he does his OJ joke, mm-hmm. and dude, like, everyone was doing OJ jokes, and, and I, I feel like there was only two guys that, that it knocked right. it out of the park, yeah. which was Chris Rock and Damon. Those were the only two OJ jokes that, that should have been said. Oh, shit, I got another one. Uh, Sinbad, yes. man. Sinbad crushed uh, yeah. we're at the college. Yeah, the levels of laundry. Just, oh, they're yeah. dirty. There's, I'm funky. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, man, there's too yeah. many to name, yeah. man. This is my, uh, what is it? Yeah. My playlist. How's yeah, that? Yeah, I can't do a number one favorite. And a number, people always go, what's your all-time favorite song? That is the hardest question to ever answer. Yeah. yeah. Off the top yeah. of your head, real quick, go. 
Number my, one song. Number one song? Yeah. Stay Gold, Stevie Wonder. It was in the Outsiders movie. Wow. Mm. Man in the Mirror, Michael Jackson. I, to this day, you can play Man in the Mirror anywhere, and I, I'm pretty sure everyone will sing it. Mm -hmm. It's that good. No. You know I used to impersonate Michael Jackson when I was a kid. There's pictures. Of, oh, by the way, it's in my book, by the way. There's pictures of my mom yes. making me one fucking glove. Like, <laughs> that's me performing. But that's another thing. But, but people don't yeah. know that. I wasn't doing it. My, I was, you were doing a job. And here's the thing. There's, there's stock hacky Michael Jackson jokes. Yeah. Right. But then there's Joe Coy talking about Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah. It's He's, a point of view thing. It's the same thing with airline material. Yeah. People are like, oh, this hack's doing airline material. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I'm doing Jason Collins talking about airlines. It was it was literally a part of my life. And, yeah. and you know, that was also the beginning of my, my career well, too. Did you do that talent shows and stuff with it? This is a goddamn talent show. Look at it. That glove was made by my mom. Oh wow. She she sewed on the little sparklers and shit. Uh-huh. Look at that shit. Like you can see. Yeah, look at that. Doing Billie Jean right here. Mm -hmm. Look at that tape, tape record right there, dude. I was oh, yeah. And when I went to this school, it was called Spanaway Junior High School. They had a talent show. And the only reason why I got on it is because I could pop, right? They put me out third, and I moonwalked. I just got to the school. No one knew me. You got to remember, it's 1984, right? And I moonwalked from one side of the basketball court to the other. And the whole fucking... Jim yeah. stood and screamed because they'd never seen the moonwalk. Favorite album? Yeah. Oh, shit. So many. You ready? Mm -hmm. One that I, I played over and over again until I couldn't play it anymore was Guy. Because there was something about that mm -hmm. transition in R&B. There was something happening and no one he, knew what it was. It was Teddy Riley yep. was doing something mm -hmm. to R&B that people just, doing. people were just like, what the fuck is this kid doing? He was mixing hip hop with R&B. Yeah. He was the first guy to do, let's sing R&B over hip hop beats. But he also made the R&B the beat as well. Like right. he created this he beat. He invented but the new jazz. First, oh, and then he had like the mm -hmm. big, uh, the big like gospel rants behind it. Like, yep. like, like, it was crazy. A lot like, of I people don't it. know that the three guys on the album cover. There's one that doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. He didn't even, he wasn't on the tours or any of that stuff. And, but he did who write got, two songs. Who did he get replaced by? Aaron Hall's Aaron, brother. Aaron Hall's brother. Aaron Hall's Damian brother. Hall. Yeah. That guy that's on the cover, he's he actually wrote two really cool songs. Yeah, man. he's he he's still got a big time producing career. That he he had some low time yeah. because he was upset and hurt about what happened with because uh -huh. apparently they replaced him and didn't even fucking tell him. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he went through some shit with that, but then he ended up producing some major hits for other artists. That's why when I hear people go. Oh, I don't have a record deal. How am I going to make an album? I'm like, yo, dude, you can do it on your laptop. Yep, You're right. talking to the wrong guy, by the way. You don't, don't talk to me. If you want to do that, to talk to someone that's not in, in the industry, that, mm -hmm. that'll sympathize for you and, and let you hear all the things you want to hear. And I guess because the inspiration of listening to Teddy Riley and how he was like 14 or 15 writing Johnny Kemp's Just Got yeah. Paid yep. or writing Keith Sweat's uh, I Want Her uh -huh. and, then, and then writing Guy in his studio apartment in Harlem or some shit or wherever it was in New York and finding out that Aaron Hall was singing that shit in the shower. They made the shower, the, the, the sound booth. The sound booth was the shower in the 80s. There was no garage band, nothing. They had to physically grab these yep. massive cables and cords and speakers and foam on the walls. and Recording off of four track recorders. And four shit. tracks. Like, yeah. please don't tell me you don't have yep, a deal yep. and no one's going to make me, uh, no one's going to believe in me and no one's going to invest in me. I'm really, I don't want to hear it. Yep. Your knowledge and all that has always impressed me. Like who wrote this and who produced this and he did this and the first time I ever noticed it, way back in the day, we were at some restaurant in the afternoon and I'll be sure oh, came I'll in sure, yeah. and I remember I'll never forget because he had a koi on his a koi fish on his hat yeah. and you said I like your hat and then you said hey and then instead of being like oh I'm your biggest fan or whatever like most yeah, people I you him. were like I, I liked it when you did that, that, that and he was just like man you really know your shit yeah. I knew how he got his deal I knew he, he played football I knew he was going to college he did his shit on a on a, a four track as well yep and, uh, and, and I knew all the songs that he wrote there was an identical song on the I'll be sure album and the, and the guy album that were the same song different titles different lyrics but it was yeah. the same song uh, uh, oh, uh, I know that you I can. Wanna, and then you no, can call, call me crazy. crazy. Yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Dude, oh. I'm telling you, those guys were geniuses. Those I guys thought you were, were gonna say it was literally the same song. Cause remember they would do that from time to time yeah. in the '80s. Like there was the um, hide and seek. Did New Edition had a hit with it, but so did uh, yeah. Five Star. How about when Jodeci moved to New York? You're gonna oh. love this shit. Tell me. They were in North Carolina back in the literally late '80s, right, early '90s, and they had karaoke machines 
where you could go into a machine at the mall, put like $10 in. Oh, I remember those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could pick a track or you and could put your song. own track and then sing on top of it. That's how they made their demo, bro. This is how fucking confident they were and how, and how talented they were. They made the tape, which came on a cassette, yep. and they were like, man, we need to go to New York. With no management, no nothing, sleeping in their car. Can you believe that? That's it's, why. It's amazing. Like, that's why when I hear those stories, man, and like, like if I'm not doing it, if I'm not making my own copy, writing my own book, or Funko Pop, or making a shirt, or whatever, like whatever it is that I'm doing, it's because of... The, my inspirations from the past. It's learning from them. And that's what I, I feel like this generation just does not do. Everything is so accessible and so fast and so quick. They, they see people making millions of dollars online because they cracked a head, a, an egg over their head. And well, well, I cracked an egg over my head. Where's my millions? It's like, there's, there's more to it than that. You gotta create, you gotta be, if you don't believe in it, then no one else is. Here's another one, the forum, right? I sold out two shows at the forum. First thing I said to my sister, make a thousand, uh, 10,000 postcards. Postcard flyers that say Netflix on the back of it. And I had like a team of people handing my cards out at a show that I already sold out. And like I said, not everyone has seen my Netflix special. Hand that shit out. What also what I've noticed, what I've seen from as the non stand up, yeah, is when you guys get those big things, yeah, you, then you have to work even harder. harder. Capitalize. I never forget every time I would call Joe to tell him I had a good set. You were always whatever about that. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah but did you hand your cards out? Yeah. You? That's where me and a bunch of other peers and friends that were under, that's where we all got that idea. From. Yeah, man. Picture of you or your logo with all your information. Not only people that are asking for it, you're just giving it to them. Because it's a numbers thing. Laugh Factory, out front. You out had your front. own DVD that you made. I made and myself. You're signing up. You know what that. else is crazy is like there's comics, you know, my peers. And they still talk about that. They still go, yo, Joe, I remember when you uh, used to hand your cards out out front of the Laugh Factory. Right. When, when, oh, when, when is this happening? Uh, the book drops uh, March 23rd. March 23rd. Yeah, you pre-order it. Three years to write. Mm. Mixed plate. Yep. Took you three years? Did you do it by hand? Yep, I did it by hand on a yellow legal pad. Yeah, I got some great pictures in here, man. I got some, I got some see that yummies. Image. Yeah, man, this is crazy, dude. Oh, wow. Yeah, so man. this is just your story? This is my story. Way up until... So now, man. cool. And which uh, which chapter am I mentioning? Uh, chapter one. Yeah, it's called <laughs> the reason why I do stand up. <laughs> David Cullen. I use Joe to get into comedy. <laughs> I go. I didn't know how it worked. I never went to an open mic. Didn't even know that existed. Yeah. You said you should go do the open mic at the Ha Ha. In my head, I'm like not doing that. And then I went to the Ha Ha. <laughs> so I went. Can I speak to the owner at the front door? Yeah. They brought him, Jack. Yeah. These are the names I dropped. I go. I'm a friend of Joe Coy's. I was with him, Fraser Smith, and John Lovitz last night. Because the night before we were at Brea, where you guys yeah, yeah. were doing that show that you did. I go, I'm a comedian, and my buddy Joe Coy told me to come here because this is a great club. And he goes, Joe Coy told you to come here. I go, yeah. He goes, how long have you been doing stand-up? I go, five years. Never did it in his life. He goes, come back tomorrow, you're on the show. <laughs> I was standing next to him, and he goes, five years. I swear my, my asshole just went, Wait. The first time I ever did stand-up was yeah. a 15-minute set on a weekend show. That's crazy. Because I dropped your name. No shit. <laughs> yeah. I get off stage and they go, come next week, you're on the show next That's week too. That's funny. Yep. And then I called you, I said I did a Saturday Night Show with Live and it was great. And then you said, awesome, talk to me in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> did I say yeah. And now we're 15 But that was now. your advantage, dude, because you had the advice of a seasoned pro. I you know what I mean? Cool. You were the guy that got me my first spot at the Laugh Factory. You got me eight minutes. Again, I didn't understand the business. And when you said eight minutes, to me, because I was teaching hour long classes every night, yeah. eight minutes since, and you're like, trust me. Yeah. Do the eight. And then I did the eight minutes. Almost passed out after I got off stage because I had such a great set. Yeah. And then Jamie called me and asked me to come back again. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Yep. yep. That's cool. Nice. Man. Good stories. Those Those are all good up. stories. This was fun. Yeah, it was. How do you lay into this thing, by the way? Thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me Bye, here guys. in my escape pod. Thanks again to Mr. Joe Coy, my brother over there, Jason Collings. Mr. Jason Collings, my YouTube channel, and the uh, Lion's Den podcast with Jason Collings and Brent Moore. He's just Joe, you know, he's everywhere. Love you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Yes. Oh, shit. I've got a place in the car. Oh, you're so funny. You're an actress. <laughs> you are. You, are. you better hit that line again. <laughs> All right. That was good.